Chairman of the All Progressives Congress Caretaker Committee, Governor Lee Malabuni, comes on the fire from young people within the party. They no longer want him. We'll be talking to the leader this morning. plan to remove fuel subsidy. In this place will be 5,000 Naira transport allowance to select Nigerians. And we'll talk, you know, taking a look at the newspapers this morning. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to have you join us uh, as usual. This beautiful, of course, it's a Wednesday morning, right? Yes, midweek edition. <laughs> okay, so as usual, we start off with our top uh, trending uh, conversation. I mean, this is a uh, conversation generating reaction across different platforms. So um, first on the list is actually uh, the fact that the federal government is saying we're replacing the subsidy with um, a transportation fare of 5,000 hour for 40 million poor Nigerians. And the big question is, how did we arrive at, you know, the poor, uh, 40 million poor Nigerians? What did we use? How did we find them? Who are the 40 million poor Nigerians? That's, uh, you know, the first question that pops up uh, when I actually saw that particular report. Yes, uh, Mercy, you know, just uh, we, on Monday, we talked about in the removal of our fuel and electricity uh, uh, subsidy, you know, when we had um, a guest on the show discuss it uh, in, in depth, and um, one of the things that he talked about, that was uh, Peter Esela, one of the things that he talked about was um, the federal government uh, putting um, appropriate measures in place. This is not the first time, Mercy. I know we keep on doing some sort of back and forth uh, policies uh, in the country. You know, he said uh, we need, uh, as a country that is, we need to put appropriate uh, measures in place before, you know, these uh, subsidy could be removed so Nigerians don't suffer the biting um, after effect. And um, indeed, the federal government has come out, you know, that's uh, the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, has come out to say that, uh, you know, 5,000 naira a month uh, will be given to poor Nigerians, that's between about 40 to 50 million naira. Indeed, you had talked about, uh, you know, how the selection process, you know, would be, uh, you know, made and uh, how transparent it would be. You know, and he said that the amount of people, that, uh, the amount that would be paid would actually be determined uh, on uh, who and who actually needs such money. My issue right now is that uh, what's the yardstick for the, you know, poor you know, Nigerians in Kobe, because practically the average Nigerian is actually by, um, suffering under the biting effect of, um, you know, rippling inflation. Mercy, we go to the market every day. You know, can I actually be adjudged or uh, seen as one of the people who need money? You know, and again, that amount of 5,000 naira is still in question. Is in how far can 5,000 naira transport allowance go when, uh, you know, the price of, um, uh, transport um, fares have actually um, hiked over time, and um, just how far can five thousand I take um, a worker, you know, for the entire month? So it brings me back to the conversation of um, we're not really ready because uh, when it has to do with subsidy removal, you find out that successive uh, government have actually fought, have actually tried, you know, to remove subsidy, and it's always a struggle. Just like we had that conversation, you need to have a plan. And now, from 1970, when, you know, the ideology was actually introduced, where government subsidized, you know, petrol and what have you, up until 1977, when it was actually institutionalized by that act. Yeah. And then, of course, it was introduced by, you know, the former general, uh, Lucia Gnobasanjara at the time. Now, my, my, my point is, uh, I, I don't think that the Nigerian government has really been very sincere and have always had a plan, because you always need to have a plan. It's not just... Um, if, you, if you want to remove subsidy, it shouldn't just be that you just wake up and it happens. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like this is actually a crashing, right? 40 million Nigerians. <laughs> We're, according to the latest report that was being made available by the United Nations, 211 Nigerians. And let's talk about how many poor people do we have? How did we arrive at that in mm -hmm. the entire federation? We have, we 40 have, we million, have an office 40, of statistics. <laughs> 40 million. So my point is um, 40 million, uh, just, just only 40 million poor people? 
Um, and, and how did we arrive at that? Who is going to get what across the entire, mm. you know, states of the Federation? So it goes beyond all of this. We also remember when we had this conversation where, you know, this expert was saying uh, there are all the things that needs to work. First mm. of all, you need to improve infrastructure, uh, some basic things, some basic necessities mm. that would make life very easy. And of course, it wouldn't be such a big deal. I don't think 5,000 naira is going to solve anybody's problem. I don't even think it's going to cushion the effect of transportation. Especially in Lagos. So, how many persons are we going to take each? In I mean, are we I, going to look I, I at this each state? Messi, I, Forty I, million. So, how many are we looking at in each state? What will happen indeed, to the rest? Indeed, you've talked about uh, you know the federal government crashing, as it were, as by just uh, doing uh, maybe a fire brigade approach because there have been reactions concerning you know that particular talk of uh, you know removal of fuel subsidy, and then they are saying next year by June. But then again, over time, talking about plants that is. Uh, over the years, the federal government, you know, has come out with um, some sort of uh, alleviation or measure of, uh, of palliatives, you know, to cushion some of these effects. There were times where um, mass transit buses, uh, you know, you know, were provided all in the in the wake of um, wanting to remove a fuel subsidy. At the end of the day, you know, all of that were just uh, pushed aside because uh, the mass transit buses are there, but uh, and people are still paying through their noses to commute from one place to the other. So I'm, I'm actually saying that if government would do the needful, the needful will require taking care of the basics. And if you take care of the basics, uh, you know, or the basic, uh, then every other thing would actually fall in place. No so way. it's not going to be rocket science. Mm. Sort the basic issue that we need to sort. I mean, issue of infrastructure. Uh, you know, let's all talk about the... Um, the energy power or the power sector. Mm. So all of these issues out and uh, much more. And mm. that would actually be, you know, a thing of the past. I but however, um, I, I don't know how 5,000 are, and I don't know if we're going to even be well, on some people would say it's actually <laughs> a step, but let's see how... What, what step uh, is that? Uh, maybe baby steps, as it were. Let's see how all of that, uh, you know, plays out. Uh, then again, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, is in the news again uh, this time around that he is a fault in the Lagos State and SARS report. Apparently, uh, Mercy, a lot of Nigerians have actually been awaiting um, his comment uh, since um, the leaked report. And, uh, you know, so it's not surprising that he has come out to actually give his own, uh, you know, reactions concerning that. And he described it as tales by moonlight. I remember, uh, you know, following that particular program. But to be very honest, it's, it's not because Nigerians are waiting to hear anything different from him. It's because Nigerians are waiting to have fun with all he's going to say. And if you, you know, to, yes, of course. Um, you know how we make light of everything very serious, and then we try to you know, make uh, a joke almost out of everything that's very serious. Mm. You need to see the comments, you know, in different spaces that the conversation has been generated. That's quite unfortunate. But let's begin to look at some of the basic issues that right. he has mentioned. Uh, first of all, I, I do not understand why Lai Mohammed will be defending the army. He's not... He is the Minister of Information and Communication. You know what, has not, No, no, because, you know, you're not saying that... You, first of all, you are not, you're not in Lagos. You were not at the protest. I don't know if you get the point. I now, those people you. who were there, a lot of people, you, we have different, we have people who, who actually were there, who saw these things firsthand. And we cannot just say that, you know, the, everybody will come up to start saying a lie. Why would people want to fabricate and put out fake news? Of what purpose is it? Why would they want to do that? Or maybe this is not uh, the very uh, first time. He bases you know, arguments uh, on the fact that it actually was on site. But we understand that mercy. I think we should watch and listen and hear him talk because we have a track, you know, uh, as regards that. Now we'll come back and we'll come analyze some of the things that he said, you know, concerning the, the leaked uh, Lagos NSAS report. Instead of sitting for all of one year, the panel that have just compiled social media details by the moonlight on his head and submitted, saving taxpayers' funds and everyone's time. That report is nothing but the triumph of fake news and intimidation of a silent majority by a vociferous lynch mob. Gentlemen, we have read some critical analysis, analysis of the report by a courageous few. One commentator 
a lawyer, said the reporter with small questions and answers. Another commentator, a journalist, called it a disgraceful report, but a disgraceful panel, saying it reported allegations instead of investigating the allegations. Yet another wondered how a judicial panel could use the words massacre in context and equate such to a massacre. All these and many more have raised right questions on that report. We salute their courage and refusal to be cowed by the rapidly leech more that has been screaming blue water since the report was released. We do not intend to bore you by the actual details of the discrepancies, innuendos, inconsistencies, and errors in that report. They are already in the public space. All right, so that's the Minister of um, Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, addressing a press briefing yesterday in a full and uh, leaked Lagos Ensas report. Merci. Well, like, but, but like I rightly said, uh, first of all, he wasn't present at the Lucky Toll Gate when the mm. protests happened and all that happened, and those who captured this event live, even though there were a lot of reactions, which doesn't really make sense. How do you say that, you know, uh, a video, a live video was doctored? That's number one. Now, then secondly, you also have um, the fact that he's not a member of the Executive Council of Lagos State. I mean, he's not part of Lagos State. He is a minister, you know, at the federal level. Of course, he was sworn by the Constitution. He's not a spokesman of the military and therefore should not. I, I kind of find this, you know, very, uh, you know, totally embarrassing. I understand and you. Not yeah. really. I, I must be very honest. Why are you speaking for the army? If they said the protesters, because this panel, it took uh, almost how many? 360 days for this report to actually be submitted. And if it took 360 days, persons who were constituted, why don't you allow, you know, the entire process? I mean, wh why would you, you know, make such comments and saying it's fake news with all that's going on? I understand all that you've said, uh, Mercy, but then again, uh, in as much as um, I might want to be playing um, devil's advocate uh, here, the thing is that uh, there were actually some sort of um, errors and uh, some discrepancies, and of course, uh, that particular report was saying maybe that is his justification for saying that um, it is actually fake, in as much as uh, the, the state government uh, is yet to release uh, the white paper on that, but a lot of Nigerians actually know what happened on that fateful night. No, see, there's, there's a difference between saying something is fake and something has error. When mm -hmm. you say something is fake, it's not original. Mm. There's no, I mean, it's like you just uh, fabricated something. But because when something it was has. Unsigned. Of course, we totally understand that. And mm. then we understand the fact that it's leaked. Mm. And we also understand the argument surrounding the fact that it's leaked mm. because of the lack of trust. Yesterday, you remember, I raised a question yes, as regards who should be a person of interest. You cannot be a person of interest in your own case. You cannot be the judge. You cannot be a judge in your own case. And that's what it is. So a situation where you have been indicted, you are the one setting up the panel, and the report is going to be made known to you. So what do you expect? The fact that this, you know, so th there are different different school of thought. But my point power exactly power. is this. Uh, if you want to talk about if you want to talk about jurisdiction at this point in mm. time, let the Nigerian army I mean those who have been, you know, pointed, those who have been accused uh, should come forth and, and, and address themselves. I don't remember the last time that, you know, the Minister of Information was made, uh, you know, spokesperson of the military. So no, I, he I, isn't. I, he's a spokesperson for the entire Nigeria. Of, of, of course. Government. But at this point in time, was I, I totally understand that the President is the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, yes, of, of course. But, you know, the, the military here has been mentioned in, in you know, uh, in detail. I mean, there are some names that have been mentioned. You like you have the likes of, I mean, Colonel Bellew, if I'm not mistaken, among others. Mm. The point is, he shouldn't, you know, be defending the, the military. In as much as I, I wouldn't want to hold brief for the Minister, uh, minister of uh, Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, but then I just felt it would only be fair because Nigerians actually deserve to know the truth. We will wait for the white paper and of course all the members of that particular panel... And do panel, you think that the white paper... No, the, no, the thing is that all the members of the panel actually um, ha, uh, have um, you know, copies of the white paper and even if 
for some reason, the white paper, you know, is saying something contrary. Well, you've it, actually it, heard it of the fact that some persons are complaining that they are they, receiving being threatened threats. A lot. Yes, and I am aware of that. Yes, uh, I, the, uh, the senior lawyer, you know, uh, was talking about it, and one of the star witness, you know, was also or star witnesses was also macheted. We are uh, all aware of that. But then again, it's just a matter of these. Uh, before we will see what actually is in Pandora's um, box, or you know, all the papers would see flying out and they would know who we should be uh, holding accountable for all of um, those um, indictments. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and when we come back, we will be analyzing the front pages of uh, several newspapers this morning. Stay with us. <laughs> 